At that time, Jesus began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Vote to you, Chorazin. Vote to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. For I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And your covenant, will you be exalted to heaven? You will be brought down to hates. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that if it will, it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's gospel passage, Jesus gives a warning to the lands that do not repent. One of our retreat centers, we had a person who would come regularly for the one-day retreats. And during most of the retreats, he would have a testimony to give about some kind of intervention of God, some kind of a miracle that he, he's experienced personally. And he would come every every week. That is, uh, we had it as a one-day retreat on the Saturdays. And he would come every, every week for the retreats. He seemed a very joyful person. Always came across as, as giving his testimony with lots of enthusiasm because of what Jesus has done for him. Once I remember coming across this um, middle-aged lady during one of those retreats, the Saturday retreat. And she spoke to me about her pain and her concern about her family, especially about her marriage and the pain and sorrow within her marriage that she was going through. And as she was speaking to me, this man came and stood next to her. And he said, Father, this is my wife. So that's when I, I realized the, the connection and as we were speaking, I told him, your wife is very sad in the marriage. And immediately he got defensive and he said, Father, that's not my fault. And his reasoning was this. He said, she never comes for the retreat. I'm the one who comes for the retreat. And you've seen how many times I've experienced the Lord's intervention and the Lord's miracles. And I don't question that at all. It is true. He really has experienced the Lord's miracles and the Lord's healings. I've seen his finger that was totally bent being healed completely during one of those retreats. And so I don't, I don't doubt that. But at the same time, that's his justification. He says, it's a sign that the Lord is on my side and I'm right. His wife didn't say a word. Well, why did he experience those miracles? So often we can, we can justify our own actions by thinking, I've experienced the Lord's miracles. I've experienced the Lord's interventions. And that means all must be right with me. The Lord must be happy with me. In today's gospel passage, the Lord says in Matthew eleven twenty, Then he began to reproach the cities in which many of his deeds of power had been done because they did not repent. So why were the deeds of power done? So that they would repent. Why was God's intervention amongst the people? So that they would repent. Why do miracles take place in our lives? So that we will repent. That is what happened with with uh, St. Peter in the Gospel of Luke chapter, chapter 5 verse 9 when they had the huge catch of fish and Jesus has come across Peter for the first time. Peter sees the great miracle and his response isn't that he's done very well in life. 
that he's favored by God. Rather, his response is in verse 8. But Peter saw it, fell down, and went and at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. It is his sinfulness that has actually come into his mind, and his sin has has been revealed to him in the midst of that miracle. It's a question we need to ask ourselves. The miracles and the interventions of God that we experience in our life, does it ever lead to repentance? Does it ever bring our sin in front of us? When Jesus heals the paralyzed man in John chapter 5, 38 years he was paralyzed, Jesus heals him. And after the Lord heals him, in verse 14 we read, Later Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin anymore. This miracle that has taken place in your life, let it lead you to repentance. In the second letter of Peter, chapter 3, verse 9, the second letter of Peter, chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. So God is not slow about his promise. He's waiting and he's patient with us. He provides for us. He intervenes in our life. Why? So that no one will perish and we will come to repentance. So it doesn't necessarily mean that when, when miracles are taking place in my life, when I'm getting answers to prayers, when I'm seeing God's intervention, that everything is fine with me. Everything is fine in my relationship with God. Rather, it is a time for me to look into my heart and see. Where do I stand in my relationship with God? What kind of a relationship do I share with Jesus? What kind of an attitude do I have? We read in Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 13. Only acknowledge your guilt that you have rebelled against me. From verse, 4, from verse 12 it says, Return faithless Israel. I will not look on you in anger for I am merciful. Only acknowledge your guilt. Only acknowledge your sin. Only acknowledge your mistake. And return to me. Let your sin be before your eye. It is important even in the midst of God's interventions. Let's ask ourselves, how many miracles have we experienced in life? How many times we've prayed and the Lord has answered? How many times we've cried out to God and the Lord has provided? How many times the Lord has intervened at the right time? Has there been a proportionate repentance? Or are we still sitting in the thought that all is right with me because I'm getting to see answers to prayers? Or does it humble me enough to say, Lord, I'm a sinful man. I need to repent. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Lord Jesus, you have always promised that you will provide for us. We have seen this so many times in our life, in our families. You have provided at the nick of time. When we desperately needed a miracle, you intervened. When we needed your healing, we got to see it and experience it. But Lord, we rejoiced, we gave testimonies. But we are not sure, Lord, if we have repented enough. We lived in a bubble a bubble of excitement and joy that my prayers are being answered. But never in the reality that maybe my Lord is giving me a message. A message to open my eyes and see my sin before me and to repent and turn back. 
Help me, Lord, to see my miracles as a message and a call to repent. Amen.